everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Before I introduce today's guest, I want to thank the voracious vegan, Vicki, for this really cool shirt. If you can't see the graphic, she also gave me a bag. It's literally the coolest thing I've ever received, and thank you so much. I love it. You know, often what happens with this show is a guest is referred by another guest. And a while back, I had a wonderful guest named Karen Ramsey, who did a cooking, well, an uncooking demo because she's raw on the show. She's actually coming back in a few weeks because she has a new book out and she recommended her son, Marco, and also Maria to come on the show. They have a healing sanctuary in Costa Rica, and they're going to tell you all about it today, as well as make a delicious recipe, a cucumber spaghetti with a bechamel sauce. Doesn't that sound great? Please welcome to the show, Maria and Marco. It's very nice to meet you. Oh, thank you so much for having us. We're thrilled to be here. We love yeah, I'm, I'm so excited because sometimes in, when we're in other countries, we don't get a great connection. But so far, it seems stable. You guys look great. You sound great. And I can't wait to see what you're going to make. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're fortunate enough to have fiber optic internet here. So we're hooked in and almost all the time we have great internet. So yeah. luckily, we have paradise. And then we also have the luxuries of uh, you know being in the States and other so I can't, I just, I don't know where to start. Like if you want to start with the recipe or maybe wait a little bit and tell us your stories, how you guys became plant-based and started a sanctuary. I'll let you say the name in Spanish because it sounds better coming from you. And how can we go to it and, and tell us about it? Cause it sounds like paradise. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the name is El Santuario de la Salud, which is the healing sanctuary in English. And it's just basically based into help people to get the best. Uh, through diet and lifestyle. Um, another method too, as a detoxing herbs, um, you know, whole foods, organic, and uh, from farm to table. So that's really basically our purpose. And uh, with other methods too, uh, song healing, cacao medicine, and other type of um, um, techniques that we use to enhance like health and wellness. Absolutely, yeah, that was a, a great introduction. Yeah, we're, we're based in Costa Rica. We're on the South Pacific side. We're about 30 minutes from the beach. We have ocean views, but we have nice cool air at night. There's waterfalls nearby and all these different adventures. And Costa Rica just in general is becoming and really has become a hot spot for people that are really interested in health and people that are into plant-based, people that are vegan. Uh, there's a really beautiful community here, conscious, like-minded people that uh, are really in alignment with a lot of our values. So when people come, they get to experience kind of like a vacation. They get to have some adventures. They get to go to the beach, the waterfalls. But at the same time, um, if they're looking to focus on a certain area where they want to improve with their health, they have the opportunity to absolutely dive into that as well. So yeah, we're we're We've opened semi recently, but we are uh, we're welcoming anybody that is willing to come. Uh, right now, we have occupancy for about three people max. Um, we're going to expand in the future, but it's really nice now that it's a small group of people. So we really get to concentrate on a small amount and give them individual attention. And then also, um, yeah, also now with like everything that's going on in the world, people kind of want a more intimate setting. Which is perfect. Nice. How long have you guys lived in Costa Rica? Around like um, over, like over two years. Around, yeah. That's fantastic. And how long have you guys been plant based? And uh, tell us your story individually. How you came to this way of eating and living. So I start um, actually ten years ago. This year I I turned ten years to being vegan and. Um, <laughs> My journey, it was really easy because when I was 12, I wanted to drop the meat when a yoga class. So I took a yoga class kids and the teacher was talking about like, no, no harming or killing anybody other lives or other uh, human life or human life? Yeah, creature. or creature life. And I was like, oh, I love that. I want to be just vegan and then I came to home and say to my mom like I'm just gonna be vegan I don't I'm, I don't want to eat animals anymore and then she say no 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 until you live in this house you are just gonna eat what is in your plate and you know it turned out that I couldn't like eat meat anymore so I was just like 
taken out and just dropping it to the dogs and just to the garbage because I couldn't like that my conscience right away click. I was 12, but I know that I was already, you know, something in my heart was saying no. And then I just from that from that place, I was just eating like minimum like uh, fish or chicken a little bit, but I really didn't like it, the texture. So I think it was uh, about that time to drop really like totally meat or animal products. And uh, that was when I turned 18, 19, when I totally dropped everything. And I was just like a individual being to have my rights to choose what to eat and not. And I, I just started the journey and uh, Everything just like pushed me up when I start meditating, which is one of the techniques that we use in here. So we teach people how to meditate so they can just connect with themselves and go through the nature that we are inside and um, discover how amazing we are. And uh, in that journey, I start to just like completely totally vegan and I dropped everything and uh, I was totally convinced. I didn't need to even hear anything about like, oh, look, these animals. I was just totally in my heart that I didn't want to eat any animals and uh, yeah that was my journey and I this is what I love to do and that's what have taken me to be a chef and to do all this stuff and uh, I have been doing like cooking for big retreats of meditation and just like ashrams to cooking vegan food for like hundreds of people which is like just my passion to you know, uh, make food that is really good for you and good for everyone, for the world, for the environment. And it's not harming anybody. And it's just made with love and such a high energy of love. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that's <Beautiful. laughs> Thank you. Well, that's wonderful. That's I too became vegan for ethical reasons first, but then I found out many years later, it actually was great for your health and the planet. Exactly. That's amazing. <laughs> you want to share with us? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my story is a little bit different. I always like admire so much the people that like there was just one day where it just clicked and then it made all the sense in the world. I feel like I was definitely privileged because I was born vegetarian. Um, and then soon after when I was still a baby, I actually had health issues, mostly because uh, I was being fed a lot of processed food. Like you could be vegan, but you could be mm-hmm. eating Oreos and soda and potato chips. So Junk. being vegan just tells you what you don't eat. It doesn't say what you do eat. Um, so I was I love that. I love that. I love that. That's a great way to put it. Absolutely. And yeah, when I was young, I, I had health issues. And my mom, who you mentioned, was on the show. She was looking for solutions. And she heard about a raw food diet. And she was convinced. She started juicing me. And then nine months later, all my symptoms were basically gone. And then for the most of my, my childhood, I was either vegetarian or vegan. Um, as I got older and became a teenager, um, I kind of, you know, experimented a little bit. And it's <laughs> like trying to sneak some pizza, and some ice cream here and there, just because basically the environment, the environment that I was in. Um, but I stayed vegetarian until I went to college. And then when I was in college, the last two years, kind of the same thing. It was just the environment and the pressure and I guess also some curiosity. And I think during college, at least for me, it was a time where I was looking for myself and still trying to decide what I was going to bring to the world and who I truly was. So I was a bit confused. And I was like shopping at Walmart and eating almost a standard American diet for the last couple of years of college. But once I graduated, I finally had the time to reflect and especially reflect on my upbringing and all the values that Uh, my parents instilled with me, especially when it comes to food. And then I just became really passionate, not just about being vegan and doing it for the animals and the environment, but specifically for health too, because I saw the immediate health benefits when I started going vegan again and plant-based and eating high raw that I saw that and it really, it really made an impact on me. And I basically changed careers because when I was in college, I was really into sports broadcasting and I wanted to be a sports broadcaster. But after I graduated and had this shift, I really wanted to get into helping people with their diet and their lifestyle. So I kind of went down a course on getting certified as a personal trainer. And I recently just got my master's in nutrition. And I love just helping people heal holistically. So I love learning about sleep too. It's just like, there's so many factors that contribute to health. 
a lot of times people just focus on diet and that's a great place to start and it's a huge way to make immediate changes but there's so many other aspects that also contribute to health that are i believe are really overlooked sleep definitely being one of the main ones that is just neglected in our society and is if not as important or more important than diet sometimes so i really love exploring all the the attributes that go into health and, and sharing that knowledge with people and, and helping people heal. And I feel like, especially now, the, the world that we live in, we need to help each other and to be in service and to, to, to be there for each other. There's a lot of things right now that is causing some separation and some divide. And I think it's a time that we need to come together. And um, a lot of everybody wants to be healthy. Everybody deserves to be healthy. So I think that's something that we could all agree on. And it's something that everybody wants. Nice. Where did you get your master's in nutrition? Uh, I got it through Logan University. I actually did it online. So I was able to do it here in Costa Rica as I moved here as well. That's so cool. But you went, you went to college in the States. Yes. I went to Penn State University for my undergrad. And I just finished up here. My, my, or my, I had a uh, master's in nutrition, but the concentration was in um, nutrition and human performance. Cause I really like working with people that are into exercise as well. Cause I'm also a personal trainer and I love exercising. So that's kind of a specific side that I really enjoy doing. And how did you end up in Costa Rica? That's a good question. Okay. There's, uh, it's a long story actually. Uh, the, oh, I got another 45 minutes. So. <laughs> <laughs> if it... Well, there's two parts. The first part is that my family has been coming to Costa Rica since I was like a teenager. And we have friends that moved here and we kept coming back because we loved it so much. And I always wanted to go to, to live in a, in a country where I could grow my own food and have things locally and go to the beach and waterfalls and be in nature and all these things that I was kind of missing in New Jersey, which is where I'm from, especially during the winter. So that was always on the back of my mind. Um, my future plan was to go to a tropical place and kind of set my roots and be in a place where I was not only sustainable and had uh, my own water and food and energy, but also uh, regenerative and giving back to, to nature and basically where we came from. Um, so I've always come to Costa Rica when I was younger. Um, but really the main reason why I'm here right now is because of her, because she was already here. Um, basically she was chefing at a, another retreat center and when basically COVID hit, I was working back in the States. And when I realized that my company was shutting down for a little bit and the borders were about to close in Costa Rica, I thought about it for a little bit, but it was really a no brainer. I had to come here because I didn't know what was going to happen, especially during that time. Nobody really knew what was going to happen. We're like, oh my God, what's going on? So I was like, okay, if I'm going to get stuck anywhere, it's going to be Costa Rica with her. So that's why we came here and plans got a little accelerated and that's one of the, the hidden blessings of COVID. I know it's been uh, difficult for a lot of people and there's been a lot of suffering and I totally have compassion for all those people. But in a lot of ways, it's been a blessing for me because it's brought me here and with her a lot sooner than, than we thought. <laughs> nice. That's wonderful. Do you remember having health issues as a young person or was that, were you too young to remember? I definitely remember. Um, I specifically had really bad ear infections. Yeah. And I remember specifically when I was younger, waking up in the middle of the night and I, and I had really bad asthma and I couldn't breathe sometimes. So I remember my dad would like, you know, start the shower and put it on warm. So just like the, the hot water, the, the, the mist, the, yeah, the steam would help me breathe. Um, so I definitely remember that pretty vividly. And just like chronic ear infections, just like if you have a really bad ear infection, it's like almost similar to teeth pain where it just like debilitates you. It's just like puts you down. And if you have something in your head, that's like hurting, it's really awful. So I remember those two symptoms pretty well. Um, yeah, it's definitely one of the main contributors why I eat this way. Um, I know a lot of people, depending on who you are, based on your genetics and all these different things, we could be predisposed to a certain disease or a certain illness. Uh, but the way that we eat and the way that we live can can totally change that. It, it decides what genes are turned on and what genes are turned off. It's, it's a study of epigenetics. So I know that the way that I live is keeping any predisposition I have at bay. And, and that's why I live the way that I do. Do you remember how old you were at the time? 
when I was having the ear infections. Yeah. yeah. Like three years old. Because I'm, I'm wondering, like, like changing the that, like, do you remember, like, how amenable were you were to to trying dietary changes? Because I mean, it just it's so interesting to me because you're so young. I don't remember that much. I think when you're really young, um, for the most part, unless you're super super picky, like if your parent, you you want to eat what your parents eat, right? They're setting the example, and especially if you're having a kid and they're really young, just exposing them to a number of different food groups, a lot of different fruits and vegetables, that'll set the you know the standard for the rest of their lives. It's such a crucial period to really feed them and expose them to a lot of different healthy foods. And I think uh, I think I was raised that way, so it was a lot easier to transition. Nice. Well, that's great. Did, yeah, I think, other, hmm? I think the main reason it's also the diet that the mom and the that had it before they conceive because that's what they are going to give to their kids it's it's that's like a study a biological reason why kids are right now growing or uh burn sick because the diet of the parents were so bad that they just create um a really unhealthy uh you know uh, environment for the kid to burn and that was made of the kid was made of that. So the tissues of the parents were so clogged with mucus forming food that the kids just born in that way too. So it's just, it's simple. Um, I will say it's very simple just to know what is acidic food and mucus forming food that it will cause that to clog your, all your lymphatic system, all your um, organs and, uh, and everything, so that will just get uh, the door for sickness. So that's very easy to know if we know how to eat and if we know what type of foods are acidic and what type of foods are like mucus farming that we just wanna live in an alkanized um, type of food and, and environment too, right? Because too much being inside is not healthy instead of going outside on the sun or breathe clean air or just like this AC place is close it's not gonna help you to you know get in a better spot neither like just wearing shoes all the time like don't let your your body break right like we use like well i don't use anymore but a lot of people still use like tight clothes that doesn't let breathe and like it just acts asphyxiating your body so there are so many other reasons that i feel like what caused that he was sick at that age because how do you explain that a little kid is already sick when he's just one year old, right? Mm -hmm. It's because their parents w were having that diet before they conceived him and they just got this result. So now it's the baby is sick. Okay, how are you going to heal like a lot of, you know, tissues that are already clogged out? Well, we need to put the kid in a raw diet, which is the optimum diet to clear some tissues and like detox and like clear all, all the mucus and I start to feed him with like hydrating to just flush that thing out. And it's pretty easy on kids actually. Those kids that are sick, they can get super healthy super fast because the problem is small than an old people that is like 70 years old and is sick. But it doesn't mean that it's not uh, curable, but it's gonna be easy for the little kid to be healed into a raw diet um, that an adult that is 70 years old and he still wants to eat carbs and like all this mucus farming, like bread and all that thing that is kind of not good for you. Yeah. Um, th there's a question, where in New Jersey are you from? Uh, I'm from a town called Ramsey, very similar to my last name. Uh, it's in North Jersey, about like 45 minutes outside of New York City. Nice, because somebody, Dina's watching and she said she grew up in New Jersey. Not sure exactly where, wouldn't that be funny? Uh, she, New Brunswick is where she was from. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's like More, 45 the, minutes. The South River. Very nice. It'd be funny if you knew her. So tell us about the retreat and how long of a stay do you recommend for people and how many people go there and what do you do when you get there? Well, I will say um, seven days, it's a uh, it can be a good introduction if somebody's already into the plant-based diet, but we can do retreats of 40 days, which is actually the time enough for the brain to switch and make new channels on the brain to change the whole habits. So 40 days can be amazing for somebody to really, really want to hit 
and uh, just get the best of this because the weather, the the air, the everything is gonna be perfect for the person to join for 40 days. It's gonna totally re, uh, reset. But anybody that is already plant based with seven days retreat, like it's it's a really good time to reset to, right? Or what? Um, do you wanna? Yeah, absolutely. I, I definitely agree with that. Um, one thing that we both realized and a topic that I think is also definitely neglected is just habit change in general. Mm -hmm. And that's something that she talked about and why we recommend for people that really want to get the best of it to stay for a longer time. Because a lot of times people will go to a retreat or they'll, they'll get some sort of certification or they'll go to a class and in the moment they're totally on board and it sounds amazing and every, they're so pumped with so much energy. And then a week later, two weeks later, just their old habits come back. Um, and the mind is just so tricky sometimes that it just takes over. So one thing that, you know, we do recommend for people to come longer if they're really looking to completely change their habits while they're here. And then something else we do with retreat guests as well is we follow up with them a couple times after they can't come here because integration is so important. A lot of times, you know, it could be easy to come to Costa Rica and eat really amazing fruit that we have in front of us and be outside because the weather is amazing, go to the beach and, you know, we provide a bunch of healing modalities that make it a lot easier. And, you know, you don't have to worry about preparing anything for yourself. You know, you're really taken care of. But what happens when you go back to, you know, I'm from New Jersey, so I think New York City, say you live in New York City, what happens when you go back to your apartment and you have to work and you have all these other things that go on? So something that we really focus on is helping people understands the habits that they're trying to change and then follow up with them a couple times after they come here to see how their progress is going to keep them accountable to kind of be there for them so they can't just go back into their old they don't habits. feel alone to mm -hmm. and make it from a awareness place right not just to like oh yeah it was a nice cool seven days vacation instead of like coming into a place of like oh I'm making conscience that this food is not going to be good for me. So I'm not going to eat that anymore because it's going to cause this to me. It's going to be also a teaching to them or showing to them how it's really like affecting your body in which way and why you should not eat that type of food, right? And then substitute for a better food, optim food that is going to give you more energy and it's going to put you in a better place in your life and, and everything. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I didn't realize there was significance to 40 days, but when you think about it, that's how long Lent is. Not sure. So maybe they had something in mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. Well, do you cook all the meals there, Maria, or uncook? I don't yes, know if it's 100% it's, raw. It's a super simple dish. I think it will be great if I just... I think she's just talking about the retreat. Oh, I'm yeah. oh, sorry. Sorry. I was just She's ready to go to the recipe. <laughs> no, you're welcome to do the recipe, but I'm wondering, is the retreat, is it 100% raw food? And are you the one that makes all the food for the people? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have all uh, two modalities, which it can be completely raw. And we have the other that is plant-based and half raw because we, we the diet that we have, it's 85% uh, raw and 50 percent like some sweet potato steam but you know it's already not not uh raw so things like that and that's the same diet that we will follow up because at the beginning it can be too strong for some people and say like oh no i don't want that and so you have to do in a um how do you say transition transition time for people that is not used to do raw so that will be the other and yeah i I, I can be just completely plant-based if people doesn't want to do even raw. It can be just complete a uh, whole food, farm-to-table, plant-based diet. And yes, uh, Mark and myself are the ones that are doing the whole food uh, preparation and cooking and uh, yeah, everything. Yeah, I think something else that's nice to talk about is because we, we have a more intimate setting with you know two or three people here that come, um, we're able to get on a, a, a call with them and kind of learn where they're at and what would be best for them and what they're looking for. So, you know, if they're looking for an all raw retreat, we could help them out with that. If they're looking for something specifically, say they want to lose weight, we could or just, a schedule or, just or just coconut water fasting. Like there are different modalities that are more particular than being in a big retreat that you just have what they are going to serve to you, but you just cannot choose, right? 
Cool. Well, that it sounds wonderful. Has your mom visited? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's been here. <laughs> yeah, she'll nice. be back this year. Well, what's the maximum occupancy if people maybe wanted to have their own kind of retreat there with with other people? Uh, right now at our place, we have a maximum capacity of three people. Um, How many? Of three people. Wow. So it's, a, it's a very intimate setting. Um, but in the future, we're we're planning on uh, expanding in the near future. Uh, but if people are looking for to say they have a group of people and they're looking to go someplace else, we are we are we partnering. Yeah, we have partners with other retreat centers that could occupy a lot more people. And then Maria would also be the chef there, and we would also be a part of the retreat. So if you do have um, a group. say you're a group, yeah, you have a group, or you're, you're you want to do a, a retreat. yoga retreat or a women's retreat or a men's retreat. You, we can help with that. We have like doing other couple retreats with other people, just like facilitating the space. We are partnering with other healing um, retreat centers. So we are like just using the space and we are guiding the whole retreat. So that can be another option too, in case if people want to do a big groups. But right now with all these, I I don't think that is happening. <laughs> yeah, something that's for sure. yeah. That's great. Well, it sounds beautiful. I wish we could see the outside. Yeah, no, it's just kind of like we need to move the whole set of the camera in here. <laughs> right, I understand. But uh, people can check it on our website. There are videos and also pictures. Uh, you just have to click uh, El Santuario de la Salud or the Healing Sanctuary, and then you will see our website, and then you can find all the information over there too. Well, hey, there's somebody watching uh, named Angela Fischetti that says she met you, Marco, in 1999. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's I was a young pup. I yeah. was she knows nine. your mom and she's friendly with Donna Peroni as well. Oh, that's so cool. Absolutely. Yeah. What are the for, chances? Forgive me for not remembering when I was nine. I was probably just caring about running around. <laughs> that's <laughs> funny. Um, so here's a comment. Marco and Maria have the most beautiful bamboo house in their El Centurio de la Salud healing sanctuary. You wake up to a view of the entire Pacific coast. Oh. oh yeah, we're really blessed. Like the it's beautiful. The accommodations here are. Really it's a nice. gem, definitely. Yeah. I we have a whole ocean view that is like unbelievable. Yeah, some of the sunsets <laughs> that you see are just like the sun sets right over the ocean. And just recently, we had a day where we went to bed and there was a beautiful rainbow, and then we woke up and there was another beautiful rainbow. So sometimes it it really helps actually for us to like travel away from here because sometimes we kind of take it for granted a little bit. It's kind of hard to, um, but if you're looking for just pure beauty and nature, I mean, there's so many different animals here too. There's always hummingbirds coming around, toucans that are singing, howler monkeys that come by, beautiful giant blue butterflies. Like it really is paradise. It's one of the reasons that we love being here right. because we love nature so much too. There are two things that if you say you don't have, I'll be right over. What about spiders and snakes? <laughs> we have never seen that a snake in our property i feel like you also you know you call for what you want or don't want so i i'm so connected with nature that i always like respect and talk to them in a you know just car center place and say like i respect you but i truly don't want to see you like i will not want to see any snake in here so i we have never seen any snake in here Tango. <laughs> <laughs> and there are a few spiders, small spiders, nothing like, you know, in Mexico, in Tulum, we have like huge spiders, like tarantulas, and there are no such a thing in here. So it's great. Yeah. Yeah, well, terrific. Elizabeth says, is Costa Rica safe now? I heard crime rates are getting higher there. Not at a vegan retreat, though, for sure. <laughs> I, I mean, as so. far as the rest of Latin America, it's definitely one of the safest, if not the safest country. That's one of the reasons we decided to move here is because of the safety. Um, the people, the they call them the Ticos or the local Costa Ricans, and they're just extremely friendly people. Like they will go out of your way to help you if they just based on pure, you know, just the, in the good of their heart. Um, just like any place, there's certain, you know, if you're traveling alone or certain parts of the city or certain areas that are definitely more dangerous than others. But um, as a whole, Costa Rica is really safe. A lot of people go you know, hitchhiking to travel around here and they're on their own and solo, solo travelers and they haven't had 
um, any issues that we're aware of. But obviously, when you come with us, we don't take you to any of the dangerous places. We're not really close to any dangerous places, too. It's, no. we're, we're pretty far. We're about um, three, three and a half hours from the capital, which is San Jose. And we're not really close to any big cities. So we're kind of more out in the country and people are really laid back and really just kind people. How vegan friendly is the country? Are there any vegan restaurants or vegan meetup groups? Uh, there, there are more like a raw potlucks, like raw vegan potlucks than, than vegan, I will say. And vegan restaurants, there are like just like three around here close by, but there are so many in San Jose, which is the capital. But um, yeah, we go to the same place again, saying that, uh, you know, it's better if you do it at home that you just go somewhere else that, um, you know, you don't know the, the quality of the, of the ingredients that, I, that they are using, especially we're so conscious about organic stuff. So we usually don't eat outside because of the same reason, it's really hard to know what quality of the ingredients you are getting. Uh, so it's better always to eat at home. And I know a lot of people say like, oh, but I don't have time to cook. So that's what I eat outside. Okay. If you are doing that, maybe try to make at home and prep in advance something that you can create with your hands and make it with your hands and know where it's coming from. Because, uh, you know, a lot of times eating outside, you don't know where is the food coming from. You don't know how much is sprayed of like, chemicals have on it or you know or not organic food is not the best for you either it is vegan or no either you know knowing that all oreos are vegan or any type of junk food that is vegan is not gonna be good for you no matter if it's vegan so yeah that's just <laughs> yeah i think it's one of Definitely I'll say is Costa Rica is not known for their culinary arts. Like, <laughs> you go to Mexico and like, you know, some of the food that's prepared there is just incredible. But Costa Rica, the, the local cuisine is really basic. It's basically rice, beans, plantains, and meat for the most part. So um, it makes it a lot easier to come here and eat really well. Um, luckily, there's so many organic farmers in our area as well. Oh, yeah. So as we're um, kind of establishing our foundation here, uh, we have a greenhouse and we just planted a bunch of uh, veggies in there. And uh, this past year we planted about Roots. 50 or 70 fruit trees as well. So Sweet potato, yucca. Yeah, root vegetables as well. So we're setting the foundation to in the future only have our own food just here. Um, but we're very fortunate to live in an area where there's so many organic farmers where we're able to get really high quality organic local produce. And um, also fresh fruit. It's oh, yeah. not important. Like in New York, I was living in New York for a long time. And, um, you know, Chinatown in Manhattan has like tons of different type of exotic fruit. But it's from China. I mean, not from China specifically, but from Asia. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, you can find durian, you can find mangosteen, but it's not from there. It's, it's, it's bringing in a, in a ship. Sometimes it's frozen and then they just like unfroze things. Why you don't get fresh fruit like we have all these mangoes things like i want to show you all these tropical fruit can open one up too yeah yeah we have rambutans and everything is fresh local growing in costa rica and uh, mangoes thing. and everybody has fruit trees around here like we have guanabana we have mame sapote which is this chocolate sapote mame and it's grow this is from our uh from our garden right here in front guanabana like and all these kind of, of tropical fruit that is growing in costa rica and is not coming from an island in asia that you don't even know so this is mangosteen super fresh um that's actually called the the queen of fruit is a nickname for mangosteen it's like mangoes all type of so mangoes divine. and papayas that are totally orange and yellow no green as the ones that you find on the grocery store <laughs> and pineapples that are growing in here too all the bananas that you can imagine all type of bananas that you can imagine plantains and uh, fresh coconuts oh, like yeah. you don't have to you know buy those from the grocery store that are like frozen or sprayed to all these type of fruit that is fresh and it's growing in here and it's gonna be 
good for your body. <laughs> yeah, you know, I had sapote for the first time. It tastes like pudding. I oh. know. If you put it on the fridge, on the fridge, oh, yeah. and you take it out and you open it, oh my gosh, it's so good. When I was in college, I ate something called snack packs. And I had vanilla and chocolate. It reminded, so me of, it reminds me of a chocolate snack pack. It's just like <laughs> this this fruit, like it, it almost like makes my brain like explode because it just tastes exactly like chocolate pudding. It's like insane. Some of the fruits here are just ridiculous. Yeah, that's incredible. What what do you guys eat for, like in, in a day? Could, would you mind telling us? Yeah, we usually at morning is always fruit. Always, always is going to be fruit. No starch. No cereal, no milk, no nut milks, even like nothing, just pure fruit, hydrating first thing at morning. And, and usually it's a mono fruit, which is just like one type of fruit because combinations are very important too for a really good digestion part in your body. Uh, so we usually do papayas or we usually do just rambutans or we usually like mango scenes or uh, and a smoothie after that. After a mono fruit, like during a 11, 12, we get a um, kind of a, a snack, which is an smoothie with kale, bananas, coconut water, and that's it. Spirulina. Spirulina or some like powder uh, superfood that we have, and then we just blend it, and that's our snack. And then after lunch, we get a big, big, so we just make uh, three meals, but we don't need after 4 p.m., just as a style of like, you know, discipline to leave the time to your body to rest, to digest, to absorb, to get all the nutrients and also, you know, eliminate what doesn't eat. So uh, we ate until four. So our last meal is going to be a big salad and maybe some steamed sweet potatoes with a really nice dressing. And that's it. Well, it sounds delicious. <laughs> It is. That's basic. It is. Doesn't get old. <laughs> what do you do for exercise in Costa Rica? Uh, I used to. You like, just wanna. You just. You just need to like go <laughs> up to the hill and down, and you will be super fine. <laughs> we live in the mountains, so there's some places that definitely have some serious slopes, which is great exercise. Um, when I was in the states, I was you know lifting weights and you know paying more attention to playing sports and moving my body and kettlebells and things like that and doing yoga. Uh, but for me here, for the most part, there's like the jungle is my gym. That's one of the things I like to say, because jungle gym is, it's called that for a reason. And when I'm planting fruit trees, when I'm just maintaining the, the space that we have here and walking around, I get plenty of exercise. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to live in a place like this is because I wanted to be able to be outdoors and I wanted exercise to just be a part of the process, something I didn't have to think about. Um, but if I am doing exercise, I love just like calisthenics, kettlebells, and plank sports. Those are, if I'm concentrating on exercise, that's what I focus on. So we usually have a routine every day to do like yoga. Um, one day yes, one day no. How do you call that? Yeah, alternating days. Alternating dates. Uh, so I do a really high, like, tough. I was doing, like, uh, hot yoga, which is really tough on the States. So right now in here, it's really hot, so you don't need to do any hot yoga. It's enough with that. So I do, like, a hardcore yoga, and that's just enough to move your body. It's, it's, it's hatha yoga, so it's going to move a lot of parts of the body. I would say swimming too, because we go to the to the beach at least one time a week, sometimes two days. Or a the week, river. Or the river or a waterfall. And swimming is great exercise as well. Is there anything you miss from the States? It's <laughs> a good question. Uh, there's definitely some things that are really convenient about the States. Yeah. Uh, like just getting certain specific items, like say, oh, yeah. it's like Tuesday and you want some uh, specific nutritional yeast, you just like go find a place <laughs> and then two days later it's at your doorstep. Where in Costa Rica the accessibility of these things are a little bit trickier and there's really not um, that quality, like there's not as many vegan businesses and just like places to get um, specific more like niche items for sure. Um, I would say that's definitely like probably the number one inconvenience 
being here. What about you? I feel, yeah, the same thing because like the, the last week we were doing like a raw pizza and then I needed like uh, sun dried mm -hmm. tomatoes and there are no such a thing in here. So, mm -hmm. or there are, but, but they it, have sulfites, you know, like oils. just those type, type of things that we don't. So I have to make it by myself, but you know, you have to cut everything and just leave it there for like so many hours and then take it out and process and like put it like, uh, can it in jars and it's just a process of things so i will say just a couple things but honestly not much mm -hmm. well that's good so you wanted to show us the recipe i know we waited a while because from what you what you told me it's a pretty quick and easy one isn't it yeah it's super super quick super easy super good super fresh uh yeah we can start so this is gonna be uh cucumbers um spaghetti so we are just gonna peel if anybody wants to do it at home and they have the ingredients you know we can do it together and maybe marco wants to talk about something else if you want to ask we right now are gonna first step we are just gonna peel the skin for the for the cucumbers and just make it on the spiralizer as a, a spaghetti right and then we are just gonna put it away in a bowl. And then after we finish with the espiralize, uh, we are gonna start with the uh, salsa bechamel, which is actually uh, an Italian recipe but, or French recipe. And, um, and then we can just uh, plate it, but you wanna just, Say something more. Yeah, is there any other questions that you had while she's preparing this? I'm sure you could chime in if there's anything you want to point to. Let me check the chat. Ooh, wow, I got a, a super chat donation. Oh, watch yeah. Stacy N. I appreciate that. Let's see if you guys have any questions. Um, oh, so here's one. It, it, there's our are, is it safe to travel there? How is COVID affecting travel in and out of Costa Rica? It's actually really, really easy. Um, you don't need any tests to get in. You don't, uh, the one thing that you need um, if you're not vaccinated is to buy insurance, but it's really cheap, especially for a short period of time. Um, sometimes it's like a dollar a day or something like that. So it's really not a big investment. There's no quarantining. There's no anything like that. Um, so Costa Rica is one of the few countries that is very open and very easy to travel to. There's a lot of people that are still coming here. Um, despite of that, a lot of Costa Ricans depend a lot on tourism. So I think that's one of the reasons why they're more open than maybe some other countries. But yeah, it's really easy to travel here. And most, most airports fly straight to San Jose. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of people get here very easily. How do people fly? Where do people fly from? Like if they live in the West Coast, what's what's the route to get to Costa Rica? I've never flown from the West Coast. I have just flown from uh, from New Jersey, so like Newark Airport. And from there, there was all nonstop flights to, to San Jose, Costa Rica. Um, and I, I have I don't know exactly, to be honest, because the people, all the people that I know have come from that area. I don't know anybody that's come specifically from the West Coast. I think from Colorado, um, depending where you are, there might be like one stop in Dallas or some sort of terminal. Um, but in general, a lot of flights, a lot of airlines have pretty good routes to Costa Rica because of the tourism. So no matter where you are, um, it's usually pretty easy. But the, the airport in Costa Rica that people fly into is San Jose, the airport code is SJO. Um, so if you're looking for flights and just wanna see what the route would be, that would be the, the airport to fly into. Actually, it's, it's very important, the, the airport code, that it's SJO, because obviously there is a San Jose, California. Yeah, wouldn't that be something if they think they're coming to your retreat and end up in San yeah. Jose, California? Boy, are they going to be disappointed. <laughs> no, that heard happened. some stories about how that people, happened. especially people that haven't traveled out of the States yet, and they were from somewhere else in the country. First time, and they... And they, then they end up in San Jose, California, and they're like... Kind of seems pretty similar to the states. Like, why is everybody speaking English? So, definitely, definitely important to put in the correct airport, which is SJO, San Jose, Costa Rica. Yeah. 
That that is it's funny unless it happens to you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> People are asking, what do you do with the peels? Do you compost them? And you, yeah, we have a so we have a since we have grow our own veggies and everything, we do a pile compost that is big uh, because we compost everything like peeled fruits and you know greens or. Since everything is mostly like uh, raw, you know, you can just compost everything. We don't have anything that that animal or something that you don't, you cannot compost. But everything is just like just plants. So it's amazing because it creates a really rich soil. Yeah, that's something that Marie and I were both uh, certified in permaculture. That's something that was really important to us to here we started yeah, buying Costa Rica so Costa Rica. it's really important because you know we don't like to say that we own the land we like to say that we're caretakers or guardians of the land because we don't really nobody like the, owns land, the land I mean the land. I know I guess, that I guess on a piece of paper you could say that you do um but in general like we just feel so blessed to be here and to be able to take care of this land and you know in Costa Rica in general just like 50 75 years ago a lot of Costa Rica was just cow pasture and yeah. it was just completely degraded and that's one of the reasons why we love Costa Rica too is because they've completely regenerated so much area of Costa Rica and just in general too they're very conscious as far as uh, alternative energy we get like I think it's like 98% of the energy in Costa Rica is from alternative resources uh, there's a lot of winds, there's a, a decent amount of solar and geothermal. And just keeping that in mind that, you know, Earth is our place that we're living, but we have a responsibility to, Take care to look after her. I mean, she provides so much for us when we look at this food that we're able to eat and the fresh air and the water. and The weather, the weather in here, it's from our creek. Mm -hmm. Running from our creek, which is like it doesn't have any chemicals that usually the companies of water they put to clean to post the water when it's coming fresh from the mountains, right? So we have that, which is totally a privilege that nobody put chemicals into our water, which is very vital for everyone. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And yeah, there's so many different areas where we try and live in a really regenerative way a lot of people talk about sustainability but sustainability is kind of just staying at the same level um but a lot in permaculture concept is regenerative so not just staying at the same level you don't want to sustain whatever you're doing you want to you know take it to the next level and give back and regenerate soil and regenerate the land so um we take a lot of um care and a lot of put a lot of consciousness into that where we are what do you guys do for fun other than just live there? <laughs> we like to play. Uh, well, we are always learning, right? We are always like taking, um, you know, uh, e-courses with mentors that are into different areas, not just like diet, but also like growing personally, because a lot of this stuff, it's through healing emotionally stuff. So we are constantly learning, constantly growing in different areas, not just like food or exercise, but also inside. The emotional aspect is so important. So we do that stuff constantly, and we're always like trying to, uh, you know, do a stuff for or growing, inside growing too, which is very important because you want to share this with people, but, you know, somebody needs to learn these to share to others. <laughs> So this is basically, um, I have a little apothecary, so I do create my products in here too. Uh, tons of different tinctures for different organs on the body, uh, natural soaps, natural creams, natural lotions, natural sprays, natural repellent, and other uh, toothpaste, natural toothpaste, natural deodorants. So everything also to serve the community and at the same time, uh, just do it from a really conscious level. What are we putting in our skin? What are we putting in our body? Mm -hmm. And stuff like also, you know, consuming just stuff that is not good for you. Uh, so that's also part of our fun. adventure fun time. 
absolutely. I mean, I think we have a ton of fun when we go to the beach. We love going to the beach and waterfalls and swimming. That's definitely some of our fun time. Uh, we also like to play board games. We love like different types of yeah. board games. We love board games and uh, yeah, getting together with some of the community sometimes with different events and stuff. There's like ecstatic dances and things. So we like to do that on occasion as well. Cool. Well, that sounds great. So did you make this, the, you didn't make the sauce yet because I would have heard the blender. Yeah. What? <laughs> she would have heard the blender if you made the sauce. I know. Okay. So we are going to the sauce and we are, so we have fresh coconut meat, not frozen, just fresh coconut meat from a coconut in here that we just peeled. You know, you get the water out and then you peel the, co the meat of the coconut. You just put it on the blender. You can use two coconuts, this, the meat of two coconuts or one, depends on your taste. You are just gonna try it, how it does it look. It's gonna be creamy because of that. And I use a bunch of uh, parsley, a whole bunch of parsley and a bunch of dill, fresh dill. So you put it, everything on the blender and then to help to blend a little bit, you're gonna put some lemon juice. Okay. So you are gonna, you can use one lemon. This is acidic, uh, acidic uh, lemon in here. It's other type of lemon actually, that is from Costa Rica. And, or you can add a little bit of water but if you can just like literally use veggies instead of like putting water that is not a structure because you know, all the natural veggies or fruits are already a structure water. So if, if you can have the possible not to use water that is not a structure, it's better. But if you can, that's fine. It's all good. <laughs> Um, and then you can use at the end salt if you want. We try to not use it um, as, as much as we can, right? But you can use celery salt or Himalayan salt or water, uh, ocean water. I mean, that's how we call it. I don't know if that's how we call it in English, but uh, ocean, salt, ocean water that is already like a clean, pure, fil uh, filtered from any um, contaminated water that is from the ocean, that it has all the minerals mm -hmm. and it's- uh, And dry, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So you can use that and- I don't know, do you, do you want to mute us say that or should we mute ourselves zoom, so it's not too- I think she said that the Zoom mutes itself, right? What, uh, what? Just when we're doing the blender, do you want to mute Oh yeah, yeah, no, that's okay. Cause I think Zoom will mute it and don't worry about it. Okay. Awesome. Yep, Zoom did mute it. How many of you guys want to go to Costa Rica? So I think we are going to need the, the tool to push down. The tamper, yeah. Yeah, thank you. And then, uh, well, when you finish this, uh, sauce, which is the bechamel. You can add a little bit of pepper and salt, and I will show you how how it looks like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So we're going to put in this case coconut water.
usually if you put more coconut milk, it's going to look white, right? This looks a little bit green, but that's fine. And then you just pour it on the top of the cucumbers. So decadent. It's super good. And then you can add, if you want, um, some olives if you want. And it will be super, super good. You can just mix it or just eat it with, with the sauce on the top, which I like it more. <laughs> you can just mix it. People yeah, some, somebody else that, uh, oh, sorry, somebody else that you had uh, on your show a couple times that um, we really like is Alan Goldhammer. And he talks a lot about salt in general and, and sugar and oil. And we feel like it's a super, super important topic. So we try and limit the salt as much as possible. Um, it definitely depends where you're coming from. So if you need a little bit of salt, we just ask you to use it very mindfully, consciously. And use it afterwards instead of cooking with it. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. A lot of people too, it's so funny, they get a meal at a restaurant and before they even taste it, they like put salt on their food and they're like, you don't even know what it tastes like yet. You're already putting salt on it. So uh, make sure you taste it first and, and then use it consciously. That looks amazing. So people are asking, Elizabeth wants to know what's the best months to travel there. And Stephanie wants to know what are the seasons like in general? Do you have four seasons? We, no, we <laughs> just have two seasons. Uh, and it's just like summer and winter. But it's not winter, winter. They call it winter because it's basically just the only two seasons that they, they that they have in Costa Rica, the locals. And uh, winter, it's the little time that is a little bit cold, but it's not cold, really. I mean, it's cold maybe for them because you actually wear like a sweater, but that's it. There are no such thing of like, more like really cold. But if you're going to wear a sweater, it's going to be like in the middle of the night or, so, or like later yeah, in the yeah. day. Yeah, no, the rain of the day. And it depends where you are too, specifically where, where we are. Um, so it's it's the summer and the winter. And in the summer, it's the dry season. So there's very little or no rain. Because we're on the trop, on the, uh, how do you, in the Ecuador line. Equator. So it's just going to be, when it's summer over there, it's going to be winter in here. And then when it's winter there, it's going to be summer in here. So it's actually a really nice time for people that are on winter to come in here because it's going to be summer in here. Yeah, from about December to May is the summer, which is the dry season. And then from about May until December again is the, the winter time. And during that time, it it's usually sunny in the morning and then the clouds kind of roll in and then there'll be rain during the, the afternoon and the evening. Um, it really depends on your preference. Like what Maria said, if you're in a cold space, definitely coming, like getting away from like the Northeast in the winter is just amazing. Um, but personally being here in Costa Rica, I really like the in-between months as well. So like December, May, even other parts of the rainy season too are really nice because you get the sun and you get some rain and you kind of get to experience all of it. Um, but usually people like coming between December and like April. That's kind of the, the busy months of Costa Rica. For kind of like where it's when it's cold other places. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Makes sense. Oh, I got another super chat donation from Angela who met you when you were younger in 1999 and said she remembers that you liked fruit. Oh, yeah. That hasn't changed. <laughs> 22 years later. Well, that's fantastic. Well, thank you guys so much for the wonderful recipe. I hope lots of people will come to your healing center. Thank you. Thank, thank you so for the much. invitation. Yeah, we, just, we just feel really blessed to be able to provide a space and, and to have people to be able to come. Um, yeah, we're not like, we're just doing it a lot out of service too, because we really like to, to help people. And, you know, we, we've been in a place where we've needed help before. So we love that we could provide a space for people to come and, and pay attention to anything that they've kind of put on the back burner sometimes, or even if they're just coming for vacation or whatever it is. Um, so it'd be great to have anybody that feels called to come. Or if you're interested in learning out about more, you could go to our website. You could also email us at elsantuariodelasalud.com uh, or at gmail.com. And yeah, anything else you want to say? Yeah, just to remind to that people that 
there are a lot of people because I was in that place to look for a place that you can have all what you need to heal yourself and be taken care of and having this amazing weather, fresh fruit and everything in a conscious way. So there is, there is a place and there are so many spots in here like that. Uh, I feel like right now in these times, people should like just pay more attention to that part of themselves that they need to care, which is the body and the immune system. Right. And thank you so much for having us too. Like it's sure. amazing to do these shows like every single day. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's my pleasure. Awesome. That's that's how I meet wonderful people like you. Gina wants to know how hot does it get and how humid does it get? In the, I mean, it can get up to like the low nineties in the the peak of the the, the summer, um, and the humidity could be pretty high too. It's it's higher in the rainy season, obviously. Um, but it, it really fluctuates a lot. The, the weather here in Costa Rica moves around a lot and there's so many different microclimates too. So we're about half an hour from the beach and sometimes we'll be here and it'll be cool and maybe a little cloudy during the rainy season or- So in here, in here and here where we are, where is the Santorio de la Salud, it's not that humid and it's not gonna ever, it's not gonna get that hot. Mm -hmm. But going down to the beach on the coast, that's probably where it's going to be too hot and too humid. Mm -hmm. So we are not there. So that's why I think we're on the best spot possible because you have the breeze from the ocean and you have not that humidity as is being down there onto the beach. So it's perfect, like mountain on the beach. So I think that's the perfect weather that you want. Yeah, we're about like 2,000 feet elevation. So, but only a half an hour drive to the beach. It's winding road and pretty pretty far down but uh yeah it's it's a really ideal spot like we've looked around a bunch of different places in costa rica and one of the reasons why we picked this place is because of because of the, the weather and that reason in particular well it sounds like paradise and i wish you guys great success there hope to see you soon you one so day much. here <laughs> oh that would be amazing thank you so much for coming on the show and thanks all of you for watching another episode of chef aj live please come back tomorrow when my guest is sanai suzuki and she'll be making a roasted millet and kabocha squash dish thanks again marco and maria take care thank you, thank you so much. Thank bye, -bye. You.